Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I wait for everybody to come on here. It's your boy D1. I'll be going live with Freeway Ricky Ross in just a second. Excited for this conversation. What up, B? What up, D? What up, Chastity? What up, Janae? Yeah, okay. A lot of my people who I know checking in. Okay, oh, this is going to be a powerful um convo. Oh, shoot, this is about to be a powerful convo. <laughs> Boy, y'all in this thing. All right, I'm waiting for my brother to check in. Just so y'all know, this is our first time ever talking. We have never... Um, what up, what up LeCarrot? What's up, baby? Um, we, uh, you know what? We spoke, we spoke for about two minutes. Um, on the phone, super brief, super, super brief introduction. So we've never had a full, full fledged conversation. What up, D? What up, DJ? Man, I see all my people. What up, Mike? All my people, man. Y'all got your boy hype. This about to be a monumental conversation right now. D1 and Freeway Ricky Rose. Yeah, I'm just waiting to see my man pop up in the comments and then um, I'll add him in here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you to everyone, by the way, who has checked out uh, my new song, Lines Drawn. You heard me? Lines Drawn. Yeah, shout out to shout out to Echo. Yeah, shout out to Johnny. Shout out to my student. What up, B? What up, Mike? My former middle school student. Shout out to Jaquia. Yeah. Freeway Ricky Rose, man. Let's go. My new album dropping Monday, y'all. From the hood to Harvard. Let's get it. I hope y'all pre-ordered it already. If not, what up, Vos? My boy Stone Vos. Look at my people, man. Oh, my people checking it here. So great to see y'all. New album from the hood to Harvard dropping uh, Monday. And um, yeah. Lines drawn out right now. The new single and video. You hear me? But you, you can name your own price for the album. You got to go to my website, d1music.com to get it. Hold on right quick. Hold on, man. I thought I heard somebody say, I thought I heard somebody say something about a book. I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah, we got the, we got the children's book. All right, where we at? I'm waiting on my brother to tap in. I'm waiting on my brother to tap in. I put my phone on do not disturb this go round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I put my phone on do not disturb. Um, and just for the record, everybody, just to clear the air, I would love to have this type of convo either in person or virtually with anybody. So don't ever think that there's anybody that I have an issue with or that I have um, uh, a problem with to the point where I wouldn't want to talk to them. If it's for the betterment of our community, of our world, and just for humanity, then I am all for that. This positive dialogue, this constructive dialogue is what's needed. This is how people learn. This is how people build bridges, honestly. So yeah, lines drawn. The new song says a lot. You know, I do a lot of talking, but um, they said two minutes. All right, two minutes and he coming. All right, just had to make sure I wasn't tripping. Yeah, of course. Of course, of course. Tonight going to be powerful. Tonight going to be powerful. Man, 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 man. Yeah. So uh, I welcome this type of dialogue, uh, especially with my fellow brothers in hip hop. Especially with my fellow brothers in hip hop. I welcome this type of dialogue, you hear me? So I got my phone on Do Not Disturb. I'm not finna get no uh no no phone calls that's gonna mess us up. We got a thousand people on here? Man, y'all share this live with somebody, man. A thousand people? That's how y'all coming? Come on, man. This this combo about to be powerful, man. Come on, man. This combo about to be powerful, man. This about to be God, please bless this combo tonight so it can be so it can be transformative, so that this conversation can truly Truly be impactful and be uplifting and be insightful and oh yeah man I'm so I'm I'm excited I'm excited I'm excited I'm really I'm really pushing myself to the limit you know I'm um I'm really stretching myself right now y'all uh, I'm burning the candle what they say burning the candle at both ends um oh yeah you said the Uno album was uplifting but you can't wait for this newest album yeah from the hood to Harvard. Gonna be powerful, yo. It's gonna be powerful. Trust me. Trust me. It's gonna be super powerful. I can't wait for y'all to hear. I just added uh three new bonus tracks too. Y'all heard one of them today, Lines Drawn. And the other two I added. 
Alright. We're gonna keep this convo to like, you know, my brother, my brother, uh, my brother Ricky Ross, he is uh out there on the West Coast and and I'm on the East Coast with it. So um we're gonna we're gonna probably uh we're gonna probably keep this convo to maybe uh, maybe like midnight tops, East Coast. There you go. There you go, freeway Ricky Ross in the house. Y'all see him, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all see the comment. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you see the smile on my face, brother. I'm excited to have this combo. I'm about to add you in right here. Hold on, man. Hold on, brother. Like I said, before I add him, listen, y'all. We have only briefly, I'm talking about like two minutes, talked on the phone. Briefly, you know what I'm saying? So this is good because y'all get to see us interacting basically for the first time. My brother. What's up, my brother? How you doing? Is I'm doing great, bro. I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to it's a pleasure to be on here with you, man. I'm really excited to uh have this convo. And I told the people, I said, it's not like we been knowing each other and, and talked and planned all this out. This is very um, you know, this is very uh this is very um ordinary. Yeah. Generic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I just heard I just heard uh 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 you know Echo put me up on your on your on your uh on your uh on your video, you know what I'm saying? And then I was like, damn, this brother's saying the same thing I've been saying. Uh uh and and you know for me it's a little hard for me to really like judge anybody because of my past, you know what I'm saying? I, I done did some 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 you know but at the same time when you see people going the wrong way, you know, it's only right that you step up and, and, and be like, no, brother, you're doing the wrong thing. Well, first things first, my brother, I'm going to put on, I'm used to being interviewed by people, but I'm going to put on my interviewer uh, uh, rag right now. And for <laughs> the ones who might not, man, tell them your history a little bit, brother. Well, you know, my, my name is Rick Ross. My mom named me Rick Ross. That's on my birth certificate. My my friends call me Rick, without the Y. People who just know me a little bit call me Freeway Rick, and then the media started calling me Freeway Ricky Ross. They took all of it and just stuck it all together. Yeah. Okay. So what you uh, what you like to be called? Well, my friends call me Rick. So so Rick Ross. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick Ross is cool. I mean, that's my name, but Rick is cool. I don't mind just being called Rick. I don't mind. I mean, I just like to be called. You know, I just like to hear my name called. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it don't really matter. As long as it's done with, with love, you know what I'm saying, and respect, it's all good. Yes, sir. So so what's, what's, what's I mean, I'm familiar. I'm familiar just because I'm in hip-hop culture, so I'm, I'm, I'm familiar. But, uh, but let me, let you know, let me uh let you tell the people like what's 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 some of your uh your your story to where you've well, gotten to who you are today you wasn't always this person that you are right now oh no question no question I, at first i was i was a young kid like everybody else you know growing up in the ghetto wanted to be a tennis player i thought sports was gonna be my way out of the hood didn't learn how to read or write until i was 28 years old in prison with a life sentence when i was 18 years old they told me that i wasn't gonna be going to college because I couldn't read or write, even though my tennis skills was 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 up to par, my my education wasn't. So I found myself kind of like crushed, you know, like my, all my dreams and aspirations had been put in tennis. Everything I had, I've been putting toward my tennis game because I started playing tennis late anyway. So I've Wait, been putting everything. Play tennis? Yeah, I played tennis. Hold on. Bro. I know you lying, bro. No, I know you, no. not, bro. <laughs> I, I just play. left the tennis court, huh? I just left the tennis court, bro. I love tennis, bro. All right, keep going, bro. We got that in common. Uh, 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 I got the next great. My my daughter gonna be my daughter. And my son's gonna be the next great one. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We yes, just sir. We, we just left the tennis court. I ain't been off the tennis court maybe maybe an hour, hour and ten minutes. 
Man, it's cold where I'm at, you heard me. I'm on the East Coast. It's so cold. Like, it's like 31 degrees outside, you feel me? But Well, we but come I'm, out I'm, here, you know what I'm saying? We, we got to go hit some balls. Okay. I'm with it. I'm with it, brother. Keep going, brother. Keep going. Keep going. I'm yeah, so, 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 at 18 years old, they told me I wasn't going to college. And uh, I just found myself kind of like in no man's land. I didn't know what I was going to do. You know what I'm saying? Here I am. I got no skills. I can't read. Because I was a hard worker. Don't get it twisted. I always like to work. Still love to work. You know, what I mean? that's my favorite pastime. So I didn't know what I was going to do. One of my partners called me, introduced me to cocaine. Mm. I took what he, he that day he showed me fifty dollar piece. I took it from there, and before I got arrested, I had days I made as much as three million dollars in one day. Three million dollars. One day, one day, three million dollars of, of cocaine. Yeah, almost every day I made a million dollars. Every day, every day a million dollars would go through my hands. Almost every single day. Now. Uh, for 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 to make a million dollars a day that's 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 not you had like a whole bunch of people like working under you and for you mm -hmm. i had i had like like 40 40 guys that was like my guys you know like i paid their salary every friday they got a, they got a salary for me every friday like 30 40 guys that's not counting the guys that we sold to mm -hmm. that's just the guys that I use to service the operation. Okay. So this is a um so this is obviously a, a super profitable uh lifestyle for you at a certain time. How long was it until uh the inevitable happened? And when I say the inevitable, they always say, you know, people gonna end up dead or in jail. I mean, by the grace of God, you're not dead. I wound so, up how long in jail. <laughs> I had I had a, I had an eight-year run. I had about an eight year run, but you know, I did it different than most people. You know, I didn't, I didn't go with the big cars and I didn't have a jury cause I wasn't doing it to, 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 you know, to snob my, my nose at people. You know, a lot of people, they want to be, they want to be uh, rich so they can go around and snob their nose at everybody else, you know, and tell everybody else how bad they doing. But I wasn't doing it for that. I was doing it because I saw the lack of opportunity for not only myself, but for my friends and my family. So I was doing it so that I could create uh, opportunities and jobs for for the people that 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 I felt uh, uh, deserved it. <clears throat> All right, got it. So, so that allowed me to avoid the cops because the cops didn't know who they was looking for. They they created they created a task force. I had my own police force. Wait, what you mean when you said what you mean you had your own police force? They created a, a police force to catch me. Oh, 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 wow. Okay. And, and, and basically you because, were not because I did it I, the way I did it. They couldn't, they couldn't figure out who I was. Gotcha. Cause you were so anonymous. Like exactly. you weren't flashly. Gotcha. I didn't look like I didn't fit the normal, you know, I'd never been arrested. You know, I didn't fit the normal criteria of what a, what a drug dealer was. All right. I mean, I've been enraged like, where I park, we play basketball every day in the park. That was like my hangout. Go to the park, shoot ball, sell dope from the park. They surrounded the whole park. The whole park was surrounded. Mm -hmm. They let me walk, walk past. Oh, wow. Because they, they had no idea it was you. Okay. 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 I got a question. Because I always like to think about the morality of people when they are doing one thing but clearly you know we are all children of god so it's almost like we all got a heart and we all got a conscience somewhere so i'm curious was it ever clicking to you like yo i'm providing money and job opportunities for my family and friends but i'm poisoning my community at the same time or were you totally like blocking no that no that started later that started later it started later all right when in the beginning in, in the beginning it, 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 there was no addiction. Okay. You know, we didn't see addiction. See, when I first started, it was doctors, lawyers, entertainers. Poor people didn't get high on cocaine. Now, a gram of cocaine, when I first started, was like 300 bucks for one gram. Okay. Not, not like it is right now. You know, anybody can afford it. It, it wasn't affordable then. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, 
it, it was it it was it was only elite that was that was that was getting high. So mm -hmm. so I didn't see people sleeping on the street. I didn't see women prostituting. That came later on. And oh. Remember when, and remember when I started, crack was just just starting. It wasn't it wasn't like uh, um, there was a lot of history of crack and what crack could do and how addictive it was. We didn't have none of that. So when I got started, I thought it was like how, how they smoke weed right now, you know, just recreational, you know, everybody do it. Or, or, or matter of fact, when I started, the people would smoke would be, I mean, would get the, the cocaine, would be going out to a party. Uh, we're going party in the night. We're going okay. to get, we're going to get blitz. Okay. Uh, I'm going to work, work in the morning. I need a hit before I go to work. You know, we thought it was a, a, a way to to celebrate, to, to to have fun. We didn't know we didn't know that it was uh as addictive as we, we know it is right now today. You know, this is a different time. Okay. Okay. So by the time that you got arrested, brother, what was the uh what what was the mindset that you were in in terms of like had you planned on getting out the game at any time? No, I quit. Or... I quit. I quit about a year and a half before I got arrested. So how did they arrest you? Well, the feds can go back seven years. Normally, they go back five years. But, but if you're somebody they really, really want, they can go back seven years. They can get special permission and, and, and all kind of stuff to, 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 to extend it an extra two years. Okay. So, okay. So, so I'd already quit. I had started thinking about quitting about two years before I actually quit, uh, because I started to see the, uh, the, 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 the contradiction in myself. You know, oh, I don't want my girlfriend to get high. I don't want my brother to get high. I don't want my aunt to get high. But, like you said earlier, I'm selling dope to everybody. So I wrestled with those things, and it took a while. You know, it wasn't wasn't something that that, because you know. I, I'm always rationalizing, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Or if I don't do it, somebody else will. You know, I might as well get the money. So, so you know, when when you rationalize like that, then you can do whatever. But uh, uh, it took me a while before I, I I actually came to my senses and say, you know what, this dope game ain't no, you know, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no game for. Cause jail don't stop nobody from selling dope. I'm gonna tell you right now, guys are selling more dope in jail than they sold on the street. What you mean, like over the phone and all that? Just calling, calling, no, they got, type stuff. They got dope in the jailhouse. The penitentiary is just like the streets. They got dope in they got dope in the penitentiary on on that type of level to where cats is really making money, money in the penitentiary. Well, they're not making a, no million dollars a day, but I'm saying they do real good to be in jail. You know, where they can send they can send twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month home to uh, to their old lady if they want to. Oh, wow. Oh. My first, my first, when I first went to the penitentiary, because I went to a maximum security penitentiary, they put me in the hole. The hole is where you're in a cell by yourself, no no inmate conduct, contact. 23 and 1? Well, maybe worse than that, because you don't even get out, you only get a shower three days a week. Oh, so so you're not even getting an hour a day. No, out. you three. No, you stand in your cell because this is this is what they call classification. Because when you go to a penitentiary, they gotta they gotta check you out before they let you on the compound. Mm -hmm. You know, to make sure that you ain't got no enemies, that you ain't no snitch, all that stuff. They 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 run all that because they put you on the compound, and and you got a jacket or something, you could get hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for your first week or two weeks, some people stand there a month. Uh, but I said in there a week, a dude OD right down the cell from me on hair run in a maximum mm -hmm. security inside the hole. So, mm -hmm. so dope is definitely inside our penitentiaries. I mean, they can't stop. They can't stop drugs from coming in. You know, for all that, the war on drugs and all that, I, 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 don't, I don't believe in none of that. Because if they can't keep drugs out the maximum security penitentiary, there's no way they're going to be able to keep it from coming across our borders. All right, so now, now, so now you bring up another good point. If it it, it, it kind of reminds me of free speech, because you know I'm a rapper. So when we talk about rap, you can't stop people from maybe talking about certain things in their music, just like you can't stop uh, drugs from getting into this country. So 
is it a better fight to say, hey, well, we're going to focus on making sure that even if it's available to people, that people have the uh, the wherewithal to say, just because it's available, don't mean I'm going to use it. I don't want it. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, I have a vision of one day where they could have a mountain of drugs inside the park and the kids would walk by and say, look, some dumb motherfucker left cocaine here at the yep. park. What was he yep. thinking about? When yep. nobody used that shit. <laughs> right. Right. Because we give it the value. You know, to, 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 to make a, a, a kilo of cocaine might cost 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. But it's the price that we put on. Wow. 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 Okay. So that's so that's what that is. Well, what's that feeling like, brother, when you uh when you didn't left the game? two years prior a year and a half prior and you chilling at that point and, and you didn't wipe your hands and then you pulled around and what they did they just pulled up on you you was out eating one day you was at your crib and knocked I was, on your door at one of my apartment buildings you know i was building houses and stuff you know i had i was building a, i was building these apartments because i always thought i was still I, even though i had had, had 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 got out the game i still felt like i was going to jail i never 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 felt that i shouldn't go to jail you know Cause I'm I'm a I'm a conscious person. I feel like if, if you do a crime, you should you should you should you know you should pay the price, and that's how I felt. So uh, uh, I always felt that I was gonna go to jail for what I did. So one day we working on on apartment building, and next thing we know, cops just swooped up and start busting. Bang 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 bang. Um, shot at me about about four or five times. Uh, luckily, I, I I didn't get hit. Uh, but these cops had had had. The, the the name of their task force was the Freeway Rick Ross Task Force. Wow! Oh, they was coming to get you. They they was gonna make sure you ain't. Oh, yeah, it was man. And and they they was dirty too because they was planting drugs. You know, because I had come up with some schemes of how not to get caught with drugs. That it was almost impossible for them to catch me with drugs. They was really gonna have to work 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 really really hard to catch me with some drugs because I didn't have drugs. I, I may have had drugs in my possession. At at the most time, maybe like an hour, hour and a half, and that was like what I did is is I figured out what time the cops was raiding, and usually they raid like five in the morning, six in the morning, catch everybody sleep. So when I figured that out, I said, okay, when we do, we gonna do with our drugs. We are gonna do it like three, four o'clock in the morning. So mm -hmm. by the time the cops get ready to raid, we done. Mm -hmm. and and the drugs be put in 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 a stash, so uh, it was almost impossible for them to to catch me with drugs. So what they did is they started planting drugs and and lying on the witness stand and so forth. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, so 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 all that was going on to where they could build more of a case against you. And Correct. I'm curious. I'm I'm curious, and and I'm just doing this so that we can look behind the curtain because. That way, people who are maybe infatuated with this type of lifestyle or who are looking up to people like this, we can show them behind the curtain the 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 harsh reality of of everything that come along with this. What happened to all the millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, that you obviously stacked up? <laughs> Man, when you go to jail, they put in the newspaper, you getting a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Everybody go like, whoo, you know, they... They flee like roaches from raid. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody hanging around. And, and when you're in there, you can't, you know, you can't take that money in there with you. You know, you can't put it in the bag and say, this is my money. I'm going to hold on to it. You got to leave it with somebody. And, uh, you know, everybody usually abandon you. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, so. But I spent, people... you know, when I first went down, my phone bill used to be $8,000 a month for a phone bill. You know, because um, they had me in a single man cell. But they had a telephone in my cell, so you know I lay on the phone and, and and talk to my girls all day. You know, one after another one. You know, just just stay on the phone talking to them, trying to babysit them, make sure they ain't going out doing whatever you know they they do. You know, so uh, uh, my phone bill used to be crazy. You know, uh, every one of them phone bill, you know, four thousand, three thousand, and and you know when when you're in the joint, they charge you these absorbent rates. You know, for per minute on the phone. I think when I was in there then, it was like 75 cents a minute, you know, for a phone call. So uh, them phone bills go up quick. Man, man, man. Okay, okay, okay. How long did you serve in prison? I did 20 
years, a uh, total of two bits. I did two bits, uh, 20 years. Two bits? Were they, like, were they, were they, uh, how much time was there with two bits? Six months in between. Uh, I got out. Yeah. Uh, I got on, on my first bit. You know, the cops that, that I was telling you about that was planting the drugs and doing all that stuff, they got indicted. You know, I got them indicted and, and, and got a break. When I get out, uh, my drug supplier, who was my partner, supposed to be my partner, had turned into an informant. And he was sweating me about helping him. He had got stuck with 700 kilos of cocaine. and He needed to do something with him. So he talked me into introducing him to one of my young homies that was still in the game. And they got me for uh, uh, aiding and abetting the deal. Okay. Okay. Wow. So first, I introduced the two. I introduced them. I gave I gave them each other's phone number, and and uh, they they consider that as facilitating a, 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 a drug crime. Like a lot of people don't really understand uh, how conspiracy works and how easy it is to get caught up in a conspiracy. But it's as simple as if if I'm getting ready to do a drug deal and I come to you and I say, "Hey D, uh, let me use your ride. I'm finna go pick up these ten kilos of cocaine," and you throw me the keys, you just ate in the bed of me and doing them 10 kilos well ladies and gentlemen all, all the people who who feel like it's cool to to you know hold your pocket down or hold your <clears throat> and that's you know they're gonna do some foul stuff and you just feel like i'm a good friend i'm not with them but i'm i'm gonna in some way shape or form help them you know or not 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 get in their way and, and get them a, my keys or something that that's aiding and abetting, and that's a uh, yeah okay. If you give them some money, give them some money to hold hold them down, make sure they straight all that. That's aiding and abetting. Yeah. Oh, that's aiding and abetting. Anyway, you assist them in doing that crime, you can be charged with the same thing they being charged with. Wow, 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 wow. Well, um, and, tell and me I got a life sentence. I got a life sentence for that. You got a life sentence. Wait for for aiding and abetting. Because a life sentence. It carries the same. It carries the same time as uh, 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 as if I would have did the crime. Okay. 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 Wow. That's a uh, that's powerful. So tell me this: At what point did you start to notice that in hip hop, um, uh, this lifestyle? was something that was becoming glorified you know what i mean by by um by by hip-hop culture like at, at what point was it while you were locked up um was it while you were on the street to where you were like damn no, I, I was like locked up when i when i really started to notice it you know i, I uh i was still working when nwa first came out and i can remember when uh when the young boy started playing because i really you know when 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 they was first doing it i really didn't pay much attention to it because i ain't really no 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 music connoisseur you know like i ain't one who be sitting there listening to music all day but my young boys because i moved to cincinnati ohio and you know i would let the young boys come from out here from california and they would come to ohio and, and chill out after they you know and got in trouble or whatever and, and uh, they brought NWA down, and that was the first time I started to hear, you know, really gangster rap. That was my first time hearing gangster rap, and I, I heard a little bit of it, but I didn't really take notice to it. But it was later on, once I was in prison, that I really started to hear uh, 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 the gangster rap and how they started to twist it. Okay. Okay. What you mean when you say they started to twist it? What you mean? Well, it went from telling a story about what went on in the hood to actually glorifying uh, 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 what was going on or, or even, I would say even lying about what they were doing. You know, it's one thing if, if, if you saw somebody do it or if you did it yourself and, and, and you know, but now these guys are just reading newspapers and, and, and just popping off about uh, uh, stuff they ain't never did. Okay. Okay. Wow, that's narration versus glorification. I talk about that and I teach about that all the time. Um, uh, it's a huge difference. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people come from environments where they've seen this uh, around them. They've seen in their neighborhood 
Uh, they've seen it be drug infested. So narrating what you've seen and witnessed is one thing, but glorifying it is a whole nother thing. And imagine glorifying it with a fire beat underneath. You heard me? You got an 808 bumping. You got you got some you got some snares. You you got like just a fire bass line and everything. No, when and you got one of the biggest corporations in the world pushing you, marketing it, marketing. Yep. You know, marketing with, it, throwing with the strategies, with the strategies that they that they use. You know, to 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 make people uh, 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 feel it. And like you say, them beats be so cold. You know, I don't care who you is. You hear them beats go off. You gonna move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now that's facts. You 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 be in church. You be in church. Like, dang, I, I see the pastor right there, but I hear that beat over there, and I'm just like, man, what what, what that's hitting for? So I, I get it. I um, I get it. So that's the that's the power of it. And you know, you would the see. drum beat. The drum beat affects our heart too. You know, our heart is like a drum. You know, it beats boom 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 boom. Cause you know, I did a lot of studying. I went to jail. I was illiterate, but before I left, I read over three hundred books. Okay. Okay. What's yeah, some of the yeah, books? Yeah. Some of the books that stood out. Well, I say my three favorite ones: is "Think and Grow Rich," "The Richest Man in Babylon," "As a Man Think," "As a Woman Think," uh, "Influencing Winning Friends," "Influencing People," uh, "Who Moved My Cheese." You know, I, 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 because I thought, you know, I thought to myself, D, I was like, "Damn, you ain't never had a job. You, mm. you ain't never fill out a job application mm. when you left the streets." You couldn't even fill out a job application because you couldn't read or write. What you gonna do when you go home? So what I said to myself is that I gotta be over prepared. I gotta be over and above what the next man is because now I got a, a, a criminal record. Uh, 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 you know, I, I I gotta go hard. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why I do. That's why I do what I do, and, I, and you know, I go hard. And and. Uh, you know, this 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 the book I wrote when, when I was in prison. I wrote this for the young boys, you know, I say, because I didn't know if I was ever going to get out. I wrote this book here when I didn't know if I was ever going to get out of prison because I wasn't supposed to get out. And this one here is the 21 Keys to Success. That's the one uh, uh, I wrote that one uh, after I was out my first six months out of prison. I talked about how, uh, you know, I went through my trials and tribulation, you know, uh, a stint of basically being homeless uh, uh, for, for about a year. And because a lot of times, you know, we don't believe that our situations can be changed without criminology, you know, without mm -hmm. using crime to, to, to uplift us. You know, if, if somebody would have told me when, when I was coming up that I could have, you know, become a millionaire, or become rich without doing criminology, I wouldn't have believed it. Okay. So you didn't even think it was possible right so no i i never, never seen anybody do it right you know you you figure you figure like this here in, in most of our ghettos the first entrepreneur that most of our young men and young women see are drug dealers mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. are the first entrepreneurs that we run into and most of the time in, in in the ghetto so uh quite naturally that we think that that's that's natural you know in one of my favorite books it says that if a person is exposed to crime, when they first expose a crime, they're kind of shining. Oh. But if they stay around it long enough, they'll kind of start to adjust to it and say, oh, uh, it ain't too bad. Gotcha. 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 So that is, uh, that is what contributes to us being desensitized to anything to life of crime but also to even the type of messages that's in the music we listen to so you know um i think about it and, and the story that i often tell is when my best friend in new orleans got murdered you know i'm from new orleans and when my boy got killed and i was leaving his funeral um i hopped back in my car and the music that i had a desire to listen to that was already in the um you know in the in the uh in the sound system was music that if i really think about what this music is saying it's glorifying the same violent acts you know murdering and killing that just happened to my boy and it's glorifying it. it's not narrating it it's not talking about how we could fix it it's glorifying it and i was like dang i have a desire for like this delicious poison you know it's delicious because <laughs> you know 
<laughs> game. The devil gonna make it delicious. It sound great, the beat banging. And it clicked to me because I had just buried my best friend. And I was like, man. And all the pretty women like oh, it. All the pretty women like it. They get in all the clubs for free. You know what I mean? So so the club gonna be packed out. And when you go to the club, all you're gonna hear is song after song after song glorifying, killing our own people, selling dope to our own people. So it's like this trap, but it's so alluring. And for me, I um, you know, I've been fighting for for a while. I've been fighting with myself to A, not have a taste for that type of music, but B, even if I have a taste for it, to have the discipline to say, like, let me try to, let me try to abstain and stay away from it because Although I might not be going out and committing those crimes and, and living that type of lifestyle, um, I'm still supporting it. You know, I'm still supporting it if I if I'm like, hey, because like you give these... it ratings. If you listen to it on the radio, you give it ratings. There you go. So oh, that's gonna make go. the, that's gonna make the big corporation pump it more. There you go. There you go. So so that's in a nutshell. That's what made me want to be a, a rapper, brother. Um, I was a middle school teacher before I became a rapper. I was teaching middle school back in Louisiana and while I was teaching middle school, it dawned on me. I said, man, there, there's 1% of teachers in America are black men. 1% of teachers are black men. So when I was a teacher, I felt very needed in that industry. Very, very, very needed. Uh, especially for the young brothers who I was teaching because I give them something to look up to that's familiar to them. But when I thought about the amount of rappers that were black men, I was like, all right, we got a lot of rappers that are black men, but how many rappers that are black men are boldly pushing a message of being real, being righteous and being relevant, you know, being God fearing and telling people that although we come from this type of environment, at least a lot of us do, we don't have to be subjected to just being uh, products of that environment. We can make our environment become a product of us. You know, like once we, once we educate ourselves to, to become bigger than the circumstances we grew up around, we could actually use that to, you know, to change them environments. And I figured we didn't have enough people doing that in the rap game. So I decided to jump into it. And that's where um, I realized that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fighting an uphill battle, man. But I love those type of battles because, uh, you know, my first name. Them the only is ones that's worth winning. Hey, them the only ones that's worth winning. If you ain't got no Goliath. If you go beat up. Then, if you go beat up on somebody you knew you could whoop, everybody knew you could whoop them. That don't mean nothing. Talk your talk. There you go, brother. So that's I only, where, I only that's, want the big fights. I don't even want no little fights. There you go, brother. There you go. There you go. So so it's important. It's important when we fight in these fights, these big fights, that we make sure we got some big uh some big allies. And one thing I appreciate about you is even without us having met each other, I'm like, dang, my brother Freeway Rick Ross is really like online showing me love and supporting what it is I'm saying as I'm just trying to hold our culture accountable for what we are pushing and glorifying out there. And that's, um, you know, that's a, that, that, that's a big, that like, that, that's a big statement when, when a brother is not afraid to publicly stand by you and support you. And I just remember you commenting on one of my posts and you said respect. And I, that, that one word went a long way because I know your story. You know what I mean? I keep up with hip hop culture. So I know, and I was like, I appreciate that. Uh, what made you, know, you do that? Well, you know, I, I've been, I've been back in, I've been back in this, cause, cause I saw it, right? Like, I wasn't no drug dealer. I mean, even Pac, I, I watched, you know, since all the stuff been going on with Pac and 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 with Keefe D and all of them. So I, I went back and watched one of Pac's documentaries a couple, couple weeks ago. And on this documentary, Pac said something like this. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna get it right or not, cause I ain't, you know, Pac said. I'm just the rapper. I'm just the movie star. Why, why is all of this stuff happening in my life? Mm. And so what happened is that his acting and his rapping spilled over into his real life. Mm. And when it, it spilled over, it started attracting those things mm. that he was acting mm. and that, mm. that he was rapping about. He was saying that that basically wasn't him. Like, I ain't no gangster. Well, that's what I heard. When I saw the documentary, he was saying to me, I took it as him saying, I ain't no gangster. I ain't no killer. Why, why is all this stuff happening to me? Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, 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 saying that, when, when I went to the theater, I was about 14 years old, and one of my cousins took me to a theater, and I saw the movie Superfly. And mm-hmm. even though it was four years later that I had an opportunity to get into the cocaine game, but that movie had, had touched me a certain way because I saw a black man accomplish some goals that I'd never seen a black man do before. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever saw the movie Superfly, mm-hmm. but in that movie, I thought the cocaine gave him all of his power. So okay. when, when the opportunity came for me to start selling cocaine, I jumped on it. Yeah. And that's the same thing that I believe is happening right now in the streets with our young people is because their stars are these rappers. And, and not only the rappers, because it's deeper than just rap, it's TV too. Look at TV, look at the top movies. The, the, they, the, the one they took, where they took my life and, and made Snowfall killing, 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 hanging people up on telephone poles in South Central. They ain't never, ain't nobody never hung up on no telephone pole in no South Central. They ain't never, you can't never do nothing like that. Our police is crazy around here. Mm-hmm. Shooting and killing. I mean, the guy was a serial killer if, if, if you look at all of the people that they say he killed on the TV show. So what I'm saying is that all of this stuff is is indoctrination where they indoctrinate us, if that's the correct word, you know, I ain't no teacher. I, I ain't got a high school diploma, none of that. So, you know, bear with me. But I believe that they're they're fixing our minds to adjust to this philosophy, hmm. if that makes sense. Of course. It definitely makes sense. And, and and it makes it to well, imagine trying to go against the uh the the people that are supplying the poison. But the people that they've been poisoning are the first people that you got to battle because they're like, nah, we love the poison. You know what well, I mean? Like, pr- we love this poison. first line of defense. Yeah. That's the, those, are, those are street soldiers. Yeah. Those are like in the army. You know, the general, he sit back and, and get orders. And then the street soldiers going to back him up. And then and even, even what's so cold is they don't even read what these guys say. A lot of these guys say, I don't even use drugs. I don't even drink alcohol. Mm-hmm. Mm. They'd be on stage with the alcohol bottle. They'd be having iced tea in it, and mm. and you know, and, and and different substances. They don't even use this stuff, but they feed it to the kids, to to the point to where the kids are believing this mm. and eating it. Man, 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 and and that's and that's why I'm here to that's why I'm here to stand up for the young impressionable kids who I got your back. They I got your back. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. Thank you, brother. Like. I'm That's writing, why I'm writing my new book. My new book is 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 is, is going to be titled "Why Niggas Don't Want Money." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I believe that all of the stuff that we're doing is contradictory to even having money. Because see, a lot of the rappers they rap about, and 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 then these record labels prop them up where they look like they got everything. They got the cars, they got the houses, they got the women, they got the jewelry, and it really ain't even they stuff. Mm. These labels prop them up, give them that stuff. And then as soon as they get tired of them, they take it all back. And then they say, he broke. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm just trying to show people what's behind the curtain, brother. And and I want to make it clear to everyone that uh, the only way to solve difficult problems is to have difficult conversations. Oh, absolutely. So, so for me, like, when we having these conversations about the role, um, when we have these these conversations about the role that that hip hop is or isn't playing in in the lives of our youth and in miseducating them, my thing is like we don't need to be having these conversations just at the wind and we just talking about hip hop culture or talking about the labels. See, in my song I just dropped today, lines drawn, I said it, it's a three part ecosystem. The labels are one, but without creators and consumers, labels can't run. So my thing is, <laughs> there's, there's labels, there's creators, and there's consumers. So you got artists, you got fans, and you got labels. We can touch the artists because these are people who we got access to oftentimes. We can touch the fans because the fans are out here. That's your everyday people in the street. If we can empower the minds of the, the artists and the fans, the artists, to be more mindful about what they're glorifying and what they're creating and the fans to be more mindful about what they're consuming then the labels become 
the least powerful um of the of the three the labels have to adjust what they're gonna do to to what the people want and what the artists are creating so i'm just trying to empower artists and fans because everybody wants to say why are you talking about artists why are you talking about fans why don't you just talk about the labels da, 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 da. and it's like man i'm trying to tell y'all that we hold the power but we don't realize that we hold the golden ticket because we feel we we our self-esteem is so low uh oftentimes that that we just feel like we gotta point the finger elsewhere because we really don't have no power well we really do have the power we got all the power you know and, and and the way you broke it down is the same way i broke the dope game down you know in the dope game there's the manufacturer mm -hmm. there's a seller mm -hmm. and there's a user yep there you go there and you if go. you take any one of them out of the equation yep. there's no more dope game there you go yeah but the only problem with that though is if the people don't get smart what they're gonna do is they're gonna create another one uh, so uh, the people the people got to become educated so that they understand that they don't need another one we don't need nobody else feeding us dope we don't need mm -hmm. nobody else feeding us bullshit garbage mm -hmm. we we tired of garbage we want we want some sensible and, yep. and that's why you know my brother I, I got your back to the fullest you know anything that i can do you know what I'm saying? To support you, I'm gonna continue to do that, uh, uh, and you know, because this is what I've been going around. You know, since I've been home from prison, I've been home 14 years, and I've been going around the country saying the exact same thing. Like, man, it's time for us to wake up. You know what I'm saying? We got all the power in the world. We creating all this stuff, but we ain't doing nothing with it. That's it, my brother. That's it. So this is a powerful um, conversation for people to be able to see uh take place on a public platform because uh it is very important that, that that people understand we are not we are not like i'm not bro i don't have a op you know i don't have like enemies i don't have people i got beef with like i, I i'm a i'm a god fearing brother i'm a brother that's out here pushing you know pushing love pushing positivity but i understand that there are people who are oftentimes being used and they don't even realize that they're being used they're being used and manipulated by either this capitalistic society that's just making them into some rich pawns you know what i mean like i'm gonna give you a little bread but you're really a pawn they ain't even bigger chest the rich though d you 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 if you rich you can do what you want to do got you okay okay i got no if, if they this, can brother. take it from you listen if they can take it from you if another man and can take it from you it ain't even yours yeah dang bro so so some so some people really not even as rich as as we think that they are or as they think that they are and i would say that other people they are rich but what happens is they're in love with money and the bible i mean the word of god talks about like that's the root of all evil so because of their love for money although they are rich they're still a slave when they have really achieved financial freedom like brother like sister brother whoever y'all worked hard enough y'all have achieved financial freedom but it's your love for money that still allow you to be a slave to that same money and that's that's dangerous man so i'm just trying to get our culture to realize that like you said when you can see people that are millionaires and people that are successful and have built wealth without having to glorify murder and glorify drug dealing and all that type of stuff that's empowering as a kid to be like, wait, you mean I could make it by by being like that? So that's where that's where all of the doctors, all of the accountants, all of the um the artists who are who are pushing life music, the the uh the the authors, you know, the 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 public speakers, the entrepreneurs, the self-employed people who are self-employed in a way that is not taking a penitentiary chance on a daily basis. That's where we need to make sure that we aren't shy like when i was a teacher my students who would make the best grades in class they were the shyest students because they were like oh i'm making good grades that's not cool you know um <laughs> but, but the students making them bad grades they'll be loud and proud with it they'll be like man i made a 40 on this test man i ain't even worried about school man i don't care about this stuff and they were the loudest and the most flamboyant and oftentimes it was like dang my 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 kids are being tricked into thinking that doing right is lame and doing wrong is the quickest way to fame man i've been like, saying that i've been saying that
for the longest that we got to make being smart cool again. Because I always want to be smart. Don't get it twisted. I sold dope. But I, when I sold dope, I thought I was being smart. And, mm. But I, I can admit that I made a mistake mm. by, by getting involved with drugs because my, 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 my brilliance was much bigger than, than, than what I gave credit to. And, and that's why people are going to get ready to see right now what I can do uh, when I put my mind to it. Yeah. And, and that's what I believe that we as a people got to do. We got to put our mind to some constructive uh, uh, things rather than you know, falling into these traps that that uh that this system has set up for us. Cause cause believe me, I believe that 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 the rap music is penitentiary music. You know, music that's gonna send these young boys to the penitentiary. Absolutely. I mean you listen to it and it makes it so by listening to it like that. will be the sound it's the soundtrack to something, and often soundtrack out of man. A thing. Shout out to the shout out to the little baby in the background. <laughs> yeah, but uh, now nah, my brother, it's a uh, it's it's. It's a great time to be alive, man. I want to stress to everybody that accountability is not an attack. So everyone needs to know that getting to the point where we are holding culture, our leaders accountable, our other creative geniuses accountable, holding our fans of hip hop music accountable, just holding ourselves accountable. That that doesn't mean that that's an attack on anyone. Because ultimately, it's like what is what is your spirit rooted in? And and I know, I can tell by talking to you and I know by being in my own skin that it's ultimately just rooted in saying, hey, if we all can be the best version of us, if we can be the best version of ourselves, then this world will be a better place and there's enough success and enough money and enough of whatever you're looking for for everybody like we won't have to hate on each other we won't have to feel like well i gotta do this because all the people want to hear or nah like it don't have to be that and ultimately brother like it's going to to uh to solve and sound like you and i we got uh we got more to do we got more to do bro oh absolutely absolutely and i'm glad to see somebody else on the same page you know what i'm saying that that know that it gotta happen because I believe, I believe that a change is coming. Yes. I believe that the people finna get fed up, you know, with eating garbage. And they are gonna throw it in the trash can. That's powerful. My, that's my belief. That's powerful. That's powerful. That's powerful. Well, we are. Uh, and I'm gonna be a part. I'm gonna be a part of helping that happen. Oh, you better. You better be. <laughs> Too, brother like you 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 an authentic voice you are you are an authentic voice that talks from lived experience and and your heart your heart has truly fully changed like you're not tripping on like man y'all got to give me my props for the man i used to be you on some i could tell you on some like no it's about who i'm becoming about, about no props yeah thank you i, I give myself you. props there you go there you go you know, i told so, myself that you somebody special that's it that's it brother and, and i don't care what nobody else say they can say that he ain't nothing he's he a jailbird or he, he a coke dealer or whatever they want to say because that's their opinion yeah. but their yeah. opinion don't make me who i am yeah. I yes take, yes take who i'm gonna be yes absolutely i love it brother hey and you could always <laughs> i i'm a firm believer that you can tell by a person's smile. Like you can tell if, if that's an external smile or if they smiling from the inside because they be glowing. And honestly, brother, when I see you smile, you be glowing, bro. Like you be glowing, bro. So I know that it's yeah. coming from coming from an internal place, brother. I can I can see it, bro. Well, you know, I'm like a dead man that got his life back. I lost yeah. my, my life. That's how you feel. Yeah, I lost my life. I was walking around in a concrete tomb. Yeah, yeah. And they said I was never getting out. Man, 
Man. So now I'm out here, you know, and, and I get to talk to the brothers that I thought that I could only, the only way I thought I was going to get to talk to them was through this. Yeah. Yeah. But now I, now I get to talk to them. I get yeah. To, yeah. Get to show them. So I'm going to show them. I'm going to be an example. Yeah. Big thing. I'm going to be an example. I'm going to show, mm -hmm. show them. Oh, yeah, I could have went, you know, I'm probably the most talked about dude ever in hip hop. Mm. 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 Rick Ross named himself after me. Freeway named himself after me. Freeway Rich named himself after me. The Freeway Boys named themselves after me. I remember the first time I heard my name mentioned in rap was uh, 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 Compton Most Wanted. Mm. Mm. That was in what, 88 or something. They've been talking about me in rap since, no, no, even before that, Master, Master Spade on his, mm -hmm. his first record was talking mm -hmm. about me in it. So, so I know what I could have did. I know that, 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 that my, my, my track record uh, uh, speaks for itself, but that don't yeah. make me. That was, that was something that I did when I was, yeah. see, I, I was dumb when I did that. Mm -hmm. I never read read a book. I never read a newspaper. I don't even know if I'd ever watched the news. Mm. Mm. So you talking gotcha. about you talking about a person at that time was 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 really dumb to a lot of facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got, mm -hmm. got my facts off the street from the guy at the liquor store with the bottle. Turn the bottle up. Yeah, bro, young boy, you're selling dope. It's cool. You ought to be a dope boy. You know these mm -hmm. are dudes who was educating me. Dang. Yeah. Damn, bro. Yeah. Hey, we um I'm seeing people talking about they getting chills while watching us talk, man. This is a blessing, bro. Well, Before we gotta we, we gotta we we gotta we we definitely gotta start working together, man. I, I definitely wanna get with you and we do some stuff, maybe, you know, go to some schools, you know, uh and talk to the kids. We gotta play some tennis too, bro. We, we, we gotta play. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah, we gotta do all that. Hey. Before we get out of here, my brother, um, I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pray us out. You heard me? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say a prayer, man, over everybody that's watching this right now. This is, uh, this is powerful. So, all right, let's um, do it. for everybody, yeah, I thank y'all for, uh, Father God, we come to you tonight, extremely grateful that you gave us this opportunity to share this conversation. This conversation has been groundbreaking. It's been heart filled, heartfelt, and Lord, it's given people hope. It's given people inspiration that they passed is not connected to their future in a way that defines them. They are not gonna be subjected to what they once were in a way that they can't ever come from and, and, and overcome, Lord. So thank you for this opportunity to connect with this brother, myself and him. We both just have a heart for making our community better, making our world better, not even just our community, making your community better, God, which is the entire world. Bless everyone tonight so they could take some nuggets from this interview and go be a better version of themselves and just allow us to keep each and every day striving to be a better version of who you called us to be not who the world wants us to be not who the culture wants us to be but who god our creator has called us to be in jesus name we pray amen amen i appreciate you man keep doing your thing it's love my brother all right man you be blessed all right one love peace yes indeed Woo -woo. Man, man, man. Powerful, y'all. Powerful. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, this perfect. I just I feel like I'm I'm floating on a cloud right now. This perfect, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about super perfect. Dang, yo. I'm just floating right now. I wanted to end that mug by midnight. It's 11:58. You heard me? Shout out to my brother, Freeway Ricky Ross. <sighs> Powerful convo, man. Difficult conversations help us solve difficult problems. And that wasn't a difficult conversation. Don't get it twisted. That, that convo wasn't difficult at all. Um, but I look forward to just continuing to kick these doors down, y'all, because that's leaving people with chills. That's leaving people like spirits full as they end their night. You feel me? And that's what we need. So y'all be blessed. I'll see y'all soon, all right? Um, yeah, man, that's all I got for y'all. It's your boy D1. Be real, be righteous. Be relevant, baby. Smiling from any air. I'll be glowing.